Hey guys, Youngblood with you to cover the Q&A that was released for the Banu Defender, and we're going to run through the relevant answers that they gave us. Now, starting out with the most glaring question of them all, the visibility. And they state that they're going to be addressing the issue as they knew it was going to be a problem prior to the release of the ship, which begs the question, why not address it during the concept sale? Either way, they state that they aren't planning on having any major and really negative implications as a result of the change to the way the ship looks. So I'm going to take that to mean that either the arms are going to fold in some way that um, you know impacts your overall visibility, or the seats are going to be slightly elevated inside of that cockpit. Now I'm expecting some improvement, but not a real total change either. Now regarding the arms folding, that was mentioned that they should have a lot of flexibility and is one of the ways they're considering improving that visibility by either dropping them down or moving them out a little bit more. So maybe you end up having a flight mode and a fight mode. Um, you know, being designed to escort the long range merchantman, this ship is going to have a longer range than a lot of fighters out there based on their dual fuel tanks, um, fuel intakes, and a large quantum drive as well. It's not going to match the merchantman in my mind, but it should perform better than most of the human options, or at least maybe similar to something like the Vanguard. But we're going to have to see as far as comparisons go a little bit later on. Now, speaking of the Merchant Man, they're still deciding if the Defender is going to have a way to actually fit inside of the BMM, but haven't reached a conclusion on that yet. Now, there was even some mention, and I believe this was the Town Hall, where they said that they may or they're, that they're actually considering putting in like a Defender Bay on board, um, but I'm not really holding my breath there until I see how much the BMM has actually grown. Now, agility on this ship is said to be very high, especially for a ship of this size. Uh, it's unlikely to break dance like something like the Car 2 Wall, um, but it should be more agile than something like the Buccaneer or the Sabre. And there was a note in there that the Buccaneer is going to have better stopping ability and potentially strafing ability based on the retro thrusters and placement it has, um, but it should far outclass the Hornet line in terms of agility. With the weapons, there's been quite a bit of confusion regarding the sizes and the mounts. So CIG has confirmed that there are actually three hard points coming, or there's size three hard points coming stock with gimbals uh, and size two weapons on those. But you do have the ability of mounting fixed size three weapons if you so choose. Basically, if you're flying solo, um, running size 3 is probably going to be the preferred option, but if you have someone else who's actually going to control the guns for you, then the size 2s on gimbals may be the better bet. In combat, the goal of the Defender is really to be enough of a pest that their escorts can really kind of end up escaping the engagement, while they intercept and engage while keeping their targets occupied in one place. In regards to their ability to actually fight something like a Super Hornet or a Saber, the human options mentioned are going to be, have the likely edge in that battle, as they're more focused on the offense or the attack, while the Defender is specializing in a more reactive role. They say that a skilled pilot knowing their craft would win, but if it's equal skill, sounds like the Anvil or Aegis is going to win the day. Now, outside of maneuverability, the saving grace for this ship is the Teverin base shielding that is known to be large for this ship, size 2, and is powered by dual power plants, both size 1. Then that should allow you to keep your shields up for as often as possible and for as long as possible. The ship does have an ejection system capable of being used in either cockpit if you are losing the fight, so you may not end up dying that day. Uh, the Tachyon cannons it has stock are designed to be used in long-range, long high-damage situations, so the plan there is to allow you, for to, you to really engage from a, small, or from a longer distance away. Um, basically, if it's a more threatening target, ideally you can hit them when they can't hit you. Um, but you could always decide to opt for a, a more traditional like ballistics or energy weapon if you so choose. Structurally, there's no cargo plan for the Defender, as it's almost going to be, always going to be escorting a cargo ship, uh, which can handle that volume for the convoy. And in regards to the components all being shielded on the inside, you get the advantage of being able to work on the ship in flight and in combat, um, you know, like some of our larger vehicles have. Unlike the human fighters, which are probably going to require you to EVA to try and fix it, which would almost certainly mean that it's impossible to do mid-fight. Now, as far as the design is concerned, it is sleek, so it should be able to fly without too much issue in atmosphere. However, the total lack of traditional wings may impact its overall agility in atmosphere compared to what it can do in space. So that's the Q&A being covered by me. Um, if you guys have questions about the Defender, please let me know. i got to tell you, I like the ship quite a bit more now that I've read through this. Um, but I still think that unless you're looking for an agile, long-range ship, um, you know, unlike maybe something slower like a Vanguard that's long-range, or maybe you're just an alien collector, I would probably spend my money on other human ships. So get your questions in if you have them. I appreciate you guys watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.